Hello everybody, and uh, we're walking back to uh, our life beginnings and always. And let's go to the full screen here. And then let's see. Alright, we left off, we did uh, the barbecue and we did a runaway. Uh, we had fun at the barbecue, we had the fireworks and all that. Uh, with the runaway, Cove tried to run away. He, you know, he's he misses mo he misses mo his mother and all that, and he wanted to be with her. But you know, we I, we convinced him that you know running away to try and be with her was a bad thing. You know, we brought him back. We convinced him to come back home. Uh, at the same time, we kind of we got in trouble for going with him, but. Uh, I, I, in the long run, I think if we hadn't gone with him, he, you know, who knows what would happen to him? Who, who knows what would happen to Cove? You know. So, in a way, we did a good thing trying to bring him back. You know, trying to convince him to come back and all that. So, and the only thing we did lose in the long run was we lost some TV privileges for a little bit. Oh well, oh well. All right, today, uh, and uh, well, today we have the sleepover moment DLC, and that's gonna be the last of it for the, uh, for step one DLCs. We'll be done with it, and uh, uh, just to let you know, I did get a recent update as the possible uh, release of the DLCs for step three. Looks like we're probably looking at April right now for the release of it. But, you know, who knows? I mean, I don't know. In the long run, it's going to be worth it because there's a lot of good stuff that's going to come out of it. And, uh, you know, there's going to be another, uh, another uh, make-out session uh, on step three, from what I'm hearing. That you can get into with Cove, and it all looks really good. So, I mean, I'm hearing a lot of good things about it. So, <clears throat> in the meantime, while we're wait, while I'm going to be waiting for the uh, DLCs to come out for Step Three, uh, I'm going to be doing Cat Buddy. I'm gonna I'm work, still working on doing the Yoichi route. So, look forward to that. All right. For right now, we are doing a sleepover. Okay. So, get the keyboard out here. Oh, shoot. Okay. You okay? If you say so. Sorry about that. <coughs> Alright kids, we're done with dinner. Come to the table. Your stomach's your stomach grumbled right on time. And as if it had heard your mom's words. You halted your your game and looked over. Mom was almost done with setting setting the table. She was walking around the mahogany wood in the process of putting down cutlery. Mommy was still in the kitchen, humming under her breath as she turned off the stove and put empty pots in the sink to wash. From beside you, Lizzie stared, uh, uncrossing her, her legs and standing up. She stretched her arms above her head. Uh, 
Finally, I'm re ready to eat. Then she cast her, her sly glance at, at your, in your direction. You recognize that look. <laughs> Last one to the table is a rotten egg. I haven't. But it was too late. Lizzie had already bolted towards the kitchen. I really want to do this. Can't say she hasn't been asking for it. You threw a cushion at her. I hope it smacks her right in the face, too. Grabbing one of the cushions from the sofa, you threw it towards her. It hit her in back of the legs. But it was soft to do, too soft to do anything of real uh, consequence. And she merely brushed the attack off with a scroll. It was a short distance to, to the kitchen table. <clears throat> Lizzie managed to get there easily enough, slapping a hand over the wood. Mom moved just before Lizzie could bump her, bump into her. <clears throat> With an exasperated sigh, she resumed her work. <laughs> I win again. Father, trying to talk to her about that. I win. I won. I won. That means you're ro the rotten egg. Shh, talk about yourself, my little girl. Lizzie grinned, her hands on her hips. Then she looked over your your shoulder. You think you think so too, right? You blinked. You ha you didn't you hadn't noticed what he had been doing during the little event, which wasn't much. He spotted Cove still on the floor. His legs were crossed beneath him. The arm with the cast resting on on his lap. He looked at the two of you with a slight frown. It felt sort of strange to see him still here so late. Tonight Cove had come to your house for a sleepover. Your mom's and his dad had planned it a few days ago. second one you were you were excited when your moms told you their idea there was so much to do <coughs> you co you considered all the games you consider all the games you, know, you could play <coughs> and there's stuff you could do with Cove for for days And you even helped 
mom search a uh, storage room for a sleeping bag and extra bedding to prepare for this for, to prepare for his visit Cove uh, pursed his lips at Lizzie Lizzie's question but he didn't respond maybe he was planning on ignoring her not that Lizzie would make it easy come on well did I win or what no. Thank you, Cove. See, even Cove knows. What? I don't think you won. <laughs> How come? It's not my fault, Chippy Slow. Cheating's cheating, and cheaters never win. You always pick his side! Ko stuck a uh, shy peek at, at you before answering her. I pick him and he picks me. You're a couple of rotten eggs then. Speak for yourself, Ko. That's enough. Nobody here is a loser or a rotten egg you're each farm fresh you tell her mom which is a, a sentence I never thought I'd say all right now listen to your listen to mom and come sit at the table for dinner all three of you you and Lizzie obeyed, sitting across from each other at the edge of the table. Lizzie blew a raspberry at, at you when Mom turned her back. <clears throat> Your parents bought the last of the food when they looked when they took when they took seats further down the, the table instead of sitting right next to you and Lizzie. Only Cove was was left out. He stood up from his spot on the floor but he had made it a uh, move towards the kitchen. Cove, you can sit too. <clears throat> Slowly he eyed the floor seats that made that were left. Thanks to the new seating arrangement your parents chose, one free chair was beside you, another next to Lizzie, and the, la the last two were on the other side of where your moms were sitting. Sit next to me. Um. Close gaze met your blue eyes. <clears throat> he smiled briefly. He he grinned back. He walked over, pulled out the the chair uh, next to yours, and sat down. You were glad he wanted to sit with you. He was just needed. He, he just needed to know it was okay. Now that everyone was situated, mommy began to pass out plates. Okay. Digging kids, I cooked a little bit of everything for dinner tonight. Be sure not to avoid all the veggies. Ugh. Yes, Mom. <clears throat> Each person at the table served themselves, except for one. Cove hesitated again. <coughs> he 
He fidgeted with his hands, clamped, uh, clamped on the table of his uh, top of his knees. He didn't seem very uncomfortable, very comfortable doing doing stuff uh, in someone else's house. One dish uh, seemed to have his eye at least. That's pineapple chicken. Wanna try some? Hmm. Not really, sorry. By then your mom's had knows that Cove still had nothing on his plate as well. Do you not like any of the food, honey? Well... Me hasn't tried Hawaiian food before. He hasn't? Wow. Please don't talk with your mouth full, Lizzie. And Lizzie swallowed the bite she was eating, then she spoke again. He should try it now. <clears throat> she turned to Col Cove uh, dramatically. Unless you want to shrink, that's what happens if you miss a meal. Elizabeth, that's not true. You know that. Coves squirmed under all the tension. He fidgeted with the, a fork between his fingers. I've had some some things, just not any of this. Oh shoot! I know I should have asked your dad what your favorite foods were. It's all right, Lonnie. Maybe he'll find. Uh, a new favorite food today. Uh, a new favorite today. You weren't so sure about that. Cove didn't look like he was going to be trying the food anytime soon. gonna go with the second one I think you I think you would like the pineapple chicken it's yummy um <clears throat> he ultimately trusted your judgment at your suggestion Cove carefully spooned rice and chicken in, in onto the plate you saw that he took more of the grilled pineapple than any of the vegetables. Any of the vegetables. You not are pleased, and your mom's let it slide. At first, Cole poked at the food. Clearly, he was uh, apprehensive to eat something new, but he took a, a, a few exploratory bites right it's good huh isn't it you don't have to keep asking he still speared uh, more meat with his fork and ate it chewing thoughtfully it's not bad mommy grinned at, at, the, at his words Satisfied, uh, even though it hasn't, it wasn't uh, exactly a glowing uh, condemnation. Lizzie wasn't as mollified. I think that's the word. Hmm. Uh, you're so weird. <clears throat> Don't be mean to your friend. Uh, we're not friends with Lizzie, okay? She's 
she's mean, okay? We're, we're not friends. You say that, Code. I mean, he's friends with us, but Lizzie, she is what she is, and she's like, it's hard to get along with, obviously. Oh. <clears throat> Mommy uh, wandered in the face of Ko's blunt honesty. We weren't surprised by Ko's de uh, declaration. The more you got to know him, the more you realized he wasn't the type of kid to keep his opinions to himself. She wasn't easy to get along with all the time, though Ko didn't like, make much of an effort either. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the third one. You wondered how he felt about you. You never asked before. You never had asked before. Excuse me. When you gave Cove a look, he returned a small s smile, and that made you feel good, even though you were still unsure what it meant. Your mommy looked at, at, at mom and only got a, sh a shrug. No. Elizabeth, don't call someone weird. There's no such thing as a weird person and a non-weird person. There's just different perspectives. It's not nice. It's not a nice thing to say to someone, anyone, but Pam. Mommy tried to whisper exclusively to, to mom. Her attempt to make it audible over the, the sounds of clinking silverware meant you caught the quiet words <clears throat> anyway. They're not friends, he, he said so. As parents can only try and sometimes we fail. Not all co kids will trick, will will thick at, will be thick as these. Now less talking and more eating, kids. <clears throat> you need to clean up and start winding down, uh, winding down for bed soon. But, but, mom. No buts. We talked about this. Your bedtime will be moved back a few years. For now, you don't get to stay up late. Lizzie sulked, murmuring under her breath about how it wasn't right. I'm gonna go with the last one. You stayed quiet and finished your meal. It was, it was good food, and you were plain content to just keep eating. <clears throat> That's uh, the idea. Good job, Chippy. Everyone else, get get to it. The rest of dinner passed by uneventfully. Uneventfully. Cove was silent for most of it. Even when you nudged him and tried to get him to talk. 
All too soon the table was cleared. The games in the, li the living room were put away and you were all stared to your bedrooms. Mom finished tucking you in and kissed your brow just as mommy poked her head in the room. All ready for lights off, you two. <clears throat> you were lying comfortably on your bed. <clears throat> the blanket hiked up under your armpits. <clears throat> you could kick it off later if it got too hot. Mama had to set up uh, the sleeping bag on the floor for Cole, just beside your bed. He had already uh, wiggled inside. You nodded for the both of you in response to Mummy's question. Good night. Perfect. I'll go say good night to Lizzie then. <clears throat> Mom, tweak, uh, tweak uh, your your nose. Chuckled when you squawked in annoyance and left. Mommy took her place, sitting on the edge of your bed. Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams, sweetie. <clears throat> she placed a soft kiss on your forehead. You giggled as as strands of her hair fell forward and tickled you. Mommy smiled down affectionately at you, then moved her attention to Cove, who watched from his spot on the floor. Do you need anything before falling asleep, honey? What does your dad do? Um, sometimes he picks me up and lifts me really high and he shakes his hands like he's gonna let go but he catches me again <laughs> <clears throat> he keeps doing that until sometimes he does drop me on, on my bed or other times he lowers me down and we pretend like I'm crashing. <clears throat> Cole had pretty excited, became pretty excited when talking about the nightly ritual he and his dad shared. He seemed to realize how animated he was and rationally quieted. But I don't want to do that here. Oh. Oh, how fun, though. I think you're right. That it might not be a good idea to do that tonight. The sleeping bag might not be soft enough. Soft enough, I mean. Mm. If there's anything else you can ask me. Or Chippy, uh, other Chippy's other mom. But I'm nice. I'm the nicer one. She just don't tell her that. She laughed good naturedly and stood up. Take care. Sleep well, Cove. Night. against the doorknob, she rested a hand on the light switch and locked, looked at you, looked to you. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bugs, dead bugs bite. With a la uh, la last smile, mommy turned off the lights and stepped out, closing the bedroom door behind her. 
We will listen to her footsteps fade as she walked down the hallway. But even as the sound vanished, her eyes stayed open. It was so exciting to have Ko spending the night. You were happy that Ko was spending the night, but you couldn't shake the conversation from earlier at the dinner table. Ko has said that he and Lizzie weren't friends, but that wasn't the part that was bothering you. You couldn't stop from wondering what he really thought about you. You decided to ask him. Ko? Yeah? Are we friends? Ko didn't speak for a few, a few moments, and you wondered if he, if you uh, startled him with the question. The longer the silence stretched, the more uneasy you felt about his in, impending answer. <clears throat> Do you think we're, th we're friends? I think so. You wiggle uh, your nose. Yeah, you wriggled your nose at the question, being uh, redirected back to you, back at you. <clears throat> the way Cove ha asked it made you think that maybe he hadn't even questioned it before. And more than ever, you wondered if you should have kept quiet instead. I think we're best friends. We're best friends. You heard Cove shuffle around on, in a sleeping bag, and you looked up at the sh uh, slivers of light cast upon your ceiling as you waited for him to say something. Well, there isn't somebody else. It, it could be. So I guess we're best friends. We are best friends. Thanks, Cove. You chuckled. That answer is just like him. Only because there isn't anyone, isn't anyone else. No. You get a go once more. Then you let your eyes drift close, pleased at what, what at that. It was, it was settled. You started, uh, started when Ko sighed deeply. You turned to your head to look in his direction. In the dark, you could see only a faint outline of a lump under the covers. Cove? Mm. What was that? Nothing. I can't. I can't sleep. Why not? He shifted, or at least you thought he did. You couldn't see anything since your eyes were still adjusting to the dark. But you heard his sleeping bag rustle. I want to be in my bed. Cove set up, your eyes had gotten 
used to the low light level so you could see him better he got out of uh, the seat bag uh, wobbled towards your side of the table your side of the table and pulled open the top drawer what is it I'm getting light glasses you sit up too watching his watching as he reached inside he paused for a second then pulled his hand out instead of his his glasses though he was holding a book Cole turned it around in his hands trying to figure out uh, the proper orientation for it you know even when without reading the title which when it was that was one of your moms would read to you it was special I thought you were looking for your glasses. I was. Then I felt this. It looks it looks cool. The compliment he uh, afforded uh, afforded your special book had you grinning your confusion for none. It is really cool. Oh? Oh, yeah? What's it about? It's a story about a squire who wants to become a knight. And there's magic. Does it have mermaids? No, but... Mommy reads it to me. She uses different voices for every character. Some of them were really silly too. There's lots of characters and they're all they all have good lines. So it's fun. Cobb looked excited by your words. He flipped the, the book uh, over and focused at the backside uh, summary. He must be pretty uh, interested in it. You were reminded uh, of the hours you spent hearing the tales, no matter how many times you read it or had it read to you. You were still uh, entertained by the story and pictures inside. You glanced at, at the, out the window. The moon was high in the sky. to read the book with Cove. You climbed out of bed and padded over to your the side of the table. You opened it and rummaged around, pushing aside stuffed toys and crayons. Cove called out to you in a 
a confused whisper. Um. What are you doing? You'll see. You let out a quiet cry of victory when you found what you were looking for. You jumped back onto onto the bed before any hidden boogeyman could catch you unaware. Co continued to watch as you wiggled your way beneath the blanket. You declared earlier you pulled it up over your head. Yeah, blow my nose. Ah. Sorry about that. What's Come on, check it out. Bring the book to me. Uh, bring the book to. After a minute, uh, the the bed dripped as Co got in it. Then the blanket shifted. You fed it with a flashlight in your grip, filling the. Switch, filling for the switch. With a click, a uh, small space flooded with bright light. Co, Co sputtered, uh, putting a hand up to shield himself from the beam. Ah. Moving somewhere else. Sorry. Tilted the flashlight so it was shining down toward the floor of your blanket cave and away from Ko's sensitive eyes. Is that better? Yeah. Now we can read, and my mom's won't, won't know. I do this all the time. When my mom and mommy check on me, I have to hide everything under the blanket. But I haven't been caught before. Do you want to try? Cove nodded, pleased by his straightforward response. You place the book between you and flipped it open to the first page. Meanwhile, he laid down on his belly and, and shuffled closer, picking up the flashlight to shine it on the pages. His face was illuminated with a warm glow. <clears throat> you mirrored his position, leaning in so you could see the book better. Four hands nearly brushed until you shuffled back a comfortable distance. the story to be narrated. You loved it when mommy read it to you. Why not read it as loud as you could as you dared this time of night? You didn't even need to study the, the page for for long. There was there was once a squire who dreamed of knighthood. All they wanted was to do good. 
Jacob was taken aback when you began to recite the words by heart. You even pronounced knighthood properly, a word which had given you grief in the past. His reaction encouraged you to keep going. Soon you got to an exciting part. The squire and the dragon's first first meeting. The squire, the squire well, walked up to a fearsome dragon. There, borrowed a uh, sword in one hand and a torch in the other. Her red scales danced in the light like flickering flames. You could say the dragon's lines. Do you need to get your glasses? No, it's my head. It's my head. If it if it hurts, I don't wear my glasses for a while. I can kind of see things, all right, but I don't know any voices. That's okay. It's funny anyway. Hmm. Let me just go read the pic. Read the page his mouth moving silently with the words. Eventually he nodded to himself and spoke them out loud. Who? Who goes there? Rome the dragon. Who dares to enter the ca my cave? It was your turn. You wanted to you went into the square in this speech. The next time you looked up from the page, your gaze landed right on Crow. His eyes were following the text. A soft smile lightened up his features. A lock of his hair fell onto his field of vision, but he gave it no notice. He was lost in the story. He started when when Cove caught you watching him. He raised a questioning eyebrow. What? Nothing. Cove shot you a strange look, but he went back to the book. You did too, even as your eyelids started to drop. When your eye, eyes Open again, your bedroom was pitch black and silent. Your head was smushed in your pillow. Your pajamas were, were sticking to you, and your mouth was dry. Slowly, you raised yourself uh, onto your eyebrow, elbows, you yawned. The back of your throat twinkled as you did so. You rode onto your side, set up, set up in the bed, planning on getting water from the kitchen when you saw a dark shape towing above you. You froze. Then you remembered you weren't alone in your room tonight. Cove, that you? Yeah. You shifted and felt something cyclical uh, uh, press against your, your thigh. You fumbled for it. The familiar weight of the flashlight pressed onto your palm. You turned it on. Cole blinked at you. You looking at exhausted. He was in his normal clothes again, shoes and everything. His pajama pants were left on the floor, abandoned. His sleeping bag was in a 
similar state. What is it? I can't sleep. I keep waking up. Did you have a bad dream? He shook his head from side to side. No, just can't sleep. It's weird here. You frowned. You helped, helped your mom's uh, re redecorate it only a few months back. I like my room. It's not that it's bad. It's just always sleeping. I got I I just always sleep in my bed in my room. That made things a little cl clearer. It wasn't anything that you done. Cole couldn't sleep in a new place. He just felt, I, I get it, he just felt a little bit out of place, that's all. I can get that. You wondered how long it took for Cove, Cove's bedroom in his new house to not get be weird to him probably a while. I'm gonna go. What? That shook off the last of your doziness. He was going to walk outside back to his house, his own house. This time of night, all by himself. nodded your, your shocked expression and looked at you with resolve. My dad will let, let me in and I've gone outside late before and I have to I have to go. I should tell my moms. No, I I don't want you to. Oh, shoot! I don't want you to. I'll just leave. My my dad can call them in the morning. He knew that you could just let him go. But something inside you was saying that wouldn't be the right thing to do. It's too late for you to go outside on your own. It'd be bad. Cove grumbled quietly, though stayed put. Okay, you can tell him. Oh, I'll, I'll wait. Good. When you crept into your, your, your their room, Mom was still up reading it in bed while mommy had already fallen asleep. When mom woke mommy up, they were both surprised to hear that Cove wanted to leave. And the two of them followed you back to your room to see him. Sweetie. Cove, are you all right, sweetie? Is there anything we can do to help? Mommy, uh, sounded tired after I just woke, woke it up, but she smiled at Cove kindly. Cove shook his head firmly, not meeting anyone's eyes as he did so. I just want to go home. Mm. We're sorry you don't feel comfortable staying. How about you come downstairs with us? And we'll call your dad to to get you. Cove headed toward the door. He stopped halfway there and turned back to you. Bye, Chippy. I'm sorry. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Cove. You watched as he shuffled past your mom's 
and out the room. Mom turned turn to you before leaving. All right, off to sleep, kiddo. We'll make sure Co is taken care of. Good night, Vivian. Good night, Jimmy. You listen to the sounds of their footsteps on the stairs as you huddled back down in bed, pulling your blanket up around your shoulders. You were sad that Co wanted to leave. You thought the two of you were having a good time, but you understood that it might be hard to sleep somewhere other than your own bed. Eventually, your eyes started getting heavy. Uh, with a loud yawn, you finally got comfortable in your bed and drifted off to sleep. The next morning, you were woken up by a sound of mom's voice and a soft shake on your, sh on your shoulder. Chippy, wake up. It's time to get up. And Adam. The sun was peeking through your curtains when you rubbed your eyes as they adjusted to the new light. Mom sat down on the bed next to you and you blinked at her for a moment, confused. You blinked at her for a moment, confused until you caught the empty sleeping bag on the ground and remembered what had happened during the, the night. Mr. Holden came over and to pick up Cove and to take him home. You should have seen his hair when he turned turned up half asleep. It was even messier than Mommy's in the, the morning. She chuck, chuckled at, at the thought. You could tell she was trying to make you feel better about the whole situation. You smiled back at her. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know that Cove wasn't feeling good, Chippy. That was a nice thing to do. You nodded in agreement, and Mom went on to say that maybe once Cove started to feel more comfortable, that he could try to try and leap over again sometime. He smiled, looking forward to another chance to show him how fun your house could be. The next time you saw Cove and Mr. Holmes, they both apologized for Cove having left so suddenly. You assured them that it was okay. In the end, the two of you and your parents were eventually able to move past the ill-fated sleepover. It had all been a learning experience, according to the adults. You could accept. You could accept that. There were definitely things you learned from it. And that's the end of it. 
So, like I said, it's going to be a while, probably before the the uh, release of the uh, DLCs for Step 3. So, in the meantime, I'm going to be reading on Camp Buddy, because we're still working on getting, getting the uh, Yoichi route on there. Now, I know there's quite a bit of lewd stuff on Camp Buddy, and uh, as far as that goes, I'm going to be recording it to a, a separate channel that's not on YouTube, since uh, that kind of stuff is not good to be posting on YouTube, and they're against that sort of stuff, and I don't want to get any uh, red flags on my account or anything like that, so... But anyway, thanks again for, for watching on my YouTube channel. Um, it's been great doing this, uh, the, doing the, these uh, these uh, moments on the, our life, getting into noise. And I can't wait to till the Step Three DLCs come out because I really want to get into that and read it for you guys to read through for you guys so like I said thanks for watching and don't forget to click the like button and uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already also I really appreciate it if you can go to my uh, patreon account and uh, become a patreon contributor uh, I am still doing the uh, the, the the special right now until April 8th I think it's like April 8th something like that uh, if you become a $25 uh, uh, VIP contributor you'll get a free sticker or a free button pin with a picture of me in my fursuit that says thank you for becoming a VIP contributor But that's only for uh, a limited time. Like I said, it's only until April 8th. I don't know if I'm going to be doing it anymore after that. But we'll, you know, we'll wait and see how, how things work out. So remember, like I said, uh, all the money that goes into the Patreon account goes directly to a worthy charity. I don't see a penny of it. I don't get any of it myself. It just goes. It just goes directly to a worthy charity. So I really appreciate it if you could do that. So, with that in mind, I'm gonna go here and stop record. See you guys later.